Uh, cześć, tutaj Tomek Kopyra z blogu blogkopyra.com uh, Tomek Kopyra from BeerGuide.pl uh, With me, Garrett Olivier <laughs> from uh, Brooklyn Brewery uh, Nice to meet you uh, I was impressed with your speech um, Could you tell me uh, what do you think about that uh, uh, crab beer revolution uh, everything was going on uh, at the world because not only in the USA uh, is it uh, going to go uh, with no limit or, or it's, it, it will stop at, at one point? Well, you know, I don't think that it, that it is going to stop. I think that one thing that people are starting to realize now is that what's going on in beer is not really, it is a revolution, yes, but it's also not a trend and it's not a fad. It's actually a return to normality. It just is not a normality that we remember anymore. Um, because if you look back, say, at the U.S. brewing tradition, you know, we had 48 breweries in Brooklyn. They made 10% of all the beer in the country. You know, this was in the late 1800s. We had 4,000 breweries in the United States. We had great variety. We had breweries that specialized in IPA, breweries that specialized in vice beer, you know, breweries that specialized in porter. And so we had all of that. The thing is that we lost it so that when I was growing up, this was a time that we didn't remember anymore. And I think that what's happening now is, yes, we are creating new things, but the diversity that we have right now is not new. I mean, uh -huh. we, had, we had everything. Even in Germany, when you look back, uh, you know, now as you're rediscovering in Poland, you know, how many old Polish styles of beer you know, there were that have died out. And uh, just as with uh, Gradyski, you're going to see these things coming back. And so part of it is, is, is creative uh, uh, creation. And part of it is uh, uh, is simply things being reborn. So I, I think of it uh, more of a renaissance almost than uh, a revolution, or maybe both at the same time. So uh, you think that there is more back to the past, to, to the what was? Uh, uh, but what do you think about uh, brewing in the States? Uh, styles which are origin in uh, Europe, for example, Grodziska is in a few uh, breweries in the, in the States. Uh, sour ales from uh, Belgium styles. Oh yeah. Uh, this is. Uh, I, I've heard that uh, today we have the best uh, time for a beer geek because. Mm, in no time in the past there will uh, be such a situation that in one uh, place you can taste all the styles. Yes. No, I think that part is uh, that part's definitely true. I mean, we had great variety in the United States and we had a lot of foreign beer in the old days. Uh, but now people, they get around much more than they, uh, than they used to, much more easily. We can communicate more easily so we can hear about what else is going on. And so what I find, you know, interesting is, th is things that have gone back two or three times. I mean, take IPA. IPA is a British style, died in Britain, reborn in the United States, then sent back to Britain. Now people in Britain who are making IPA are making it in the American style, and they then sell that back to us. So when you go to New York and you see people selling brew dog, you know, beer from, uh, uh, from Scotland, what they're getting is an American version brewed in Scotland of a British style beer, yeah. you know? And so it's like a ping pong ball that goes, that goes back and forth. Now you will see things like uh, 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 Berliner Weiss, you know, being quite popular uh, uh, among brew pubs in the United States. Many people brewing sour. Almost vanished in Germany. Yeah, almost vanished in Germany. One place still making it. Okay, one or two on a small level starting to bring it back. But there's a lot more Berliner Weiss made in the United States than in Germany. More sour beers made in, you know, in the United States than in Belgium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I would say is that now it's like a two-way street. And you will have, you know, the Italians inventing, you know, new things like chestnut beers. When you, when you, you know, judge beer festivals, a big beer festival in, in Italy, there's a chestnut beer category. We don't have, you know, we've had a few chestnut beers, but there they'll have like 30. Mm -hmm. And so that's interesting too, people inventing beers that come directly out of their food tradition. Uh, what, uh, what do you think, what will be the direction of the craft beer revolution goes uh, in the next few years? Because uh, we have uh, American hops uh, uh, hype, uh, then we have uh, Sour is New Hoppy, and what will be next? Well, it's interesting. I, I wonder whether, you know, 
does, do, do sour beers keep going almost like IPA did over time? Is there a natural threshold where people stop? I think what will happen is that you know the there will not be a reversal. The mass market you know will continue to go down, and craft beers will continue to go up. That doesn't mean there will not be at some point parts where a bunch of people go out of business. You know that's normal. You can't you know not everybody going to is going to open a brewery and everybody survives. There's no kind of business like that. If there was, we would all go into that business <laughs> that cannot fail. You know, so especially in places like Italy and places even like the UK, you will at some point a few years from now see a bunch of failures as some people don't make it. Some of them will reopen other breweries, you know, it's, it's normal. But I think that you're going to see these flavors becoming part of the mainstream. A few years ago when I went when I would go and, and do a beer dinner about IPA, you know, or about you know doing our beers. Yeah. You you have to explain what IPA was. Now, you know, there's almost nobody who doesn't know what IPA is. You don't have to tell the story anymore. So now that allows you to go someplace else and make you know the beer dinners and tastings uh, really different than they used to be because you're not explaining the history over and over again. You know now you walk into a room and you say brown ale, or you say IPA, or you say you know even uh, uh, different Trappist styles, and you know even people who are not don't think that they are beer fans. They're like, yeah, we already know. Uh, so uh, you think uh, that there will be. Uh, more everything, or maybe uh, looking for a vanishing styles like Grudziska, like Goza from uh, from Germany, like uh, I don't know. Uh, mm, looking for searching for uh, any hints of uh, beer styles which is, which was brewed at the past and trying to uh, reco recover it. I think there will be that. I think there will be a, a larger interest in indigenous styles. You know, things that have a flavor of a place. Like I was talking about making the beer with the sugar cane. You know, and uh, it's a funny thing. It kind of almost takes an American to see the sugar cane because they're surrounded by sugar cane. So it's like wallpaper. They don't see it anymore. When I come down there, I'm like, wow, you know, look at this stuff. So I think you're going to see indigenous beers. I think you're going to see a big uh, uh, interest in the farm to table movement. You know, becoming also the farm to glass movement. So I see. I think you're going to see a lot more breweries that want to grow their own grain. You know, or like you know, grow, grow, grow. yeah, like, grow, like like quite a few others. Uh, uh, grow their grain. You know, grow their own hops, or at least have close relationships with the farmers. You know, uh, uh, you know where. Uh, the malt and the hops in particular are no longer a commodity but become something special to them. And you know, you see the line between you know, sort of, you know, cuisine and beer becoming much more fuzzy. So now you go to New York and you see a place like 11 Madison Park that has three Michelin stars you know, and four stars in the New York Times, one of the number five now I think in the world on the, you know, on the Pacino list. They have 140 beers. You know, and they, you know, they're well selected, and they know these beers really well. You know, everybody in there can tell you about them. It's not like they have one guy, and he's the beer guy. Mm -hmm. And I think that you'll see this as well. I think that uh, the beer dinner, which used to be, you know, something that was unusual 20 years ago, is now normal. Uh, so, at the last, I, I have a question about Poland. What do you think where, where you have Poland, Polish beer? What, what, what is your first uh, impression? Well, you know, up until we tasted Gradiskia, we didn't taste so many things that were outside of either the, you know, the Czech German tradition or, you know, the Baltic Porter tradition. These were the beers that we had, and some of them were very good. Um, you know, I'm excited about seeing other things in the future, especially, you know, as Polish brewers invent new things, you know, and also, you know, I think you're going to start seeing things that have to do with Polish cooking traditions. You know, maybe, uh, you know, things that uh, someone says, oh, my grandmother used to make a kind of cake or whatever else. And we're going to make a beer that tastes kind of like that cake uh, and stuff like that. That's going to be, you know, have a very, uh, very distinctive, you know, Polish reference. Whereas the beers that I've had from Poland so far, um, they have been, you know, they have been from Poland, but there was nothing about them that was really Polish. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the Polish flavor. And I think in the future, that's what you'll see people creating is a Polish flavor. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
at the last question because I've uh, known that uh, you are going to open a brewery in uh, uh, Europe in Stockholm. Stockholm. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, it uh, will be a, a Brooklyn brewery in Europe or it will be uh, the, 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 on a, on their own? Uh, would they brew the same beer as in the States or no? There will be new beers. They'll be brewed just for uh, for Stockholm. And over time, what I want to do is, is create exactly what I'm talking about, something which is not just like Americans landing like a spaceship in Stockholm. <laughs> I want to create something which is, you know, Swedish with American influences. Mm -hmm. and, and to think about, well, what does that mean? You know, so maybe we're going to make beers that are aged in bourbon barrels with cloudberries. You know, there's, you know, there's no telling exactly what we'll do, but I mean, we have a Swedish brewing team that we've hired. Uh, they're going to come spend a lot of time with us. We're going to go to Sweden and spend a lot of time with them. So it'll definitely be both. But are you going to export this uh, beer from Sweden to the other Euro European countries? Possibly. We're going to start with Sweden, you know, and uh, 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 and certainly I'm sure a little bit of it will get around. It's mostly for Sweden, but if there's real interest and we have the capacity, you know, we'd love to do it. Uh, why Sweden? It's, uh, for me, it's hard country to brew beer. Uh, <laughs> Almost yeah. like Poland. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it's been, Sweden's been very good to us. I mean, Scandinavia in general, people have been very receptive. I've spent so much time in Stockholm now that like people in the little shops, they already know me. And so for us, it's a bit of a second home. And we had the right opportunity to, to do it. And so, you know, we, we think this is a, a fun adventure. Thank you very much for the interview. It was a pleasure to, to meet you. And thank you. And see yeah, you. Thank you.